Hello, welcome back to another vlog. I thought for today's video, I would try something a little different and do something that I get really entertained by. And that's like more of a laid back, sort of like podcast style vlog. Basically, I'm just in a really chatty mood and like, I just wanna chat about all the things. <laughs> I wanna chat and just, I love having a platform where I have a place to vent and sometimes I just want to like talk about all the stuff so I thought we could just kind of chill together and chat and hopefully it's not too loud I do not want to have the AC on right now but I have to it's a necessity a lot of you say that you watch my vlogs and you'll put it on and kind of like fold laundry or do dishes or go around the house or do whatever so I thought that this might be a fun one to just put on and go about your business have someone hanging out with you while you're doing your thing and maybe in the future this is something that I could if there's like more interest or it's something that I do more frequently I can like actually get like a good microphone and better sound and stuff like that but anyways I thought the first thing that I would chat about and just sort of catch you up on me and my life is my health I've been kind of like hinting at stuff and not that I don't feel the need to explain there are many things about my health that I'm like totally keeping private but the things that I have like opened up about in the past I will share I did make an appointment like a follow-up appointment with my OBGYN for like a specific like it's called an irregular bleed appointment um getting right into the period stuff that is something that will hopefully like progress over time and develop into like maybe you know getting some sort of diagnosis or whatever um but that's just something that i'm so grateful that that's even available and i did have my blood work and my blood work actually revealed quite a few things which is weird because i just got my blood drawn in may and like my gastro doctor is probably looking at different things than an OBGYN, but um i did find out that i'm like very anemic which makes a lot of sense um, because I'm always tired. I feel like I never have energy. Everyone else in my life, I feel like just it, it's effortless to like get up and go do things. And for me, my energy gets depleted basically with almost nothing. I feel like I've spent a lot of my life um, feeling like a lazy piece of shit because I'm not able to like do as many things as other people. And to have a diagnosis or to have a doctor tell you like yeah actually you have anemia and it's something that really affects a lot of people and it can be manifested in a lot of different ways but mostly it's like people just feel extremely lethargic and tired and I was just like whoa because I don't know anyone who's more tired than me I feel like I'm always tired I always want to take a nap and I like started to cry I feel like I could start crying right now I'm not going to but it felt so validating it was almost like when I got my SIBO diagnosis that I was like oh so there's a reason for all this stuff and it's not just like me and my fault and whatever and so yeah being anemic is something that obviously like a lot of people deal with but kind of connecting the dots the SIBO is likely causing me to have anemia and I've actually had a lot of people in my life be like are you anemic like several times throughout my life and I've always been like no but I never looked into it because I was just like no I'm fine but truly like if I do a workout class or if I you know go for a walk in the neighborhood and like come home take a shower or whatever I'm not energized at all I like need to take a nap like or I need to lay down like my energy is at zero percent and so when I am like going about my business and doing these filming days and all that kind of stuff and traveling it really takes a toll on me um and so it just feels really nice to know <laughs> that there's kind of a reason behind it but the other thing that's kind of annoying about it is I've had like a couple other things I have a couple other health concerns that have been raised by both my blood work and from my gastro doctor that like I'm not gonna get into it doesn't matter but with like you know being diagnosed with SIBO being diagnosed with anemia and then the other things that are going on every single time you're sent like a piece of paper or a PDF or whatever that's like hey here's what you should eat um, and here's what you definitely should not eat and basically all all of those things are in direct conflict with each other like every single thing <laughs> it's like if you're anemic then you need to eat lots of fibrous vegetables like broccoli and things that are high in iron and then it's like if you have SIBO definitely don't eat too much broccoli or you know th it's just it's like very confusing so that's been kind of annoying um, and of course every doctor their solution is like lose weight um, the OBGYN didn't say that but it was just like yeah there were just other things in my blood work that were like basically like cut carbs lose weight type of thing um so that's just really hard when you've been trying for the better part of like five years to enter like a more body neutral kind of space and like it feels like you're 
losing <laughs> it really does it's just kind of been something that's been on my mind and i will continue to work on it with my doctors and you know i don't i'm not looking for like medical advice or anything but it's just something that i was like huh, okay it's frustrating but at the same time like it, yeah, SIBO ruins everything. Basically, my SIBO is ruining my life, <laughs> as per usual. When I get back from my trip to England, I really need to like go back to the gastro doctor and work a little bit more aggressively on like containing the SIBO. Um, but it's just something that always comes back. It always, it's just so persistent. Anyway, I never really went to the doctor. Like growing up, I wasn't really like a doctor kind of girl. I, I went occasionally, like, you know, I got my wisdom teeth out when I was like 28. Um, I had to have an endoscopy when I was 19. But other than that, like I really didn't go to the doctor that much. So just like going to this many doctors is kind of annoying, <laughs> but also it's just something you have to do. It's like a self care, a part of self care that's not like sunshine and roses you know it's like annoying and you have to you know pursue your own health and advocate for yourself so anyway if you've been thinking about seeking out a diagnosis don't give up because really like now I have a little bit more of a care plan in place and it feels really good it feels like there's a little bit of hope on the horizon um, that wasn't there before so that feels really good and as far as my ear goes probably by the time you see this it'll be right around the time that I'm going or maybe shortly before that but I actually do have to get a hole poked in my eardrum I have to get a freaking hole poked in my eardrum what the heck I don't know how I feel about that it's so annoying but I'm getting ready to go on a plane and it's been six months of my ear never fully popping it's definitely not like completely full like it was six months ago but it's definitely not a hundred percent better either and there is still pressure in my ear i do still hear my voice in my head sometimes if that makes sense like when i'm talking i can like hear it inside my brain and that's it seems to be the only option it's my my ear just will not pop i've done the decongestants i've done the tools i've t trust me i've tried like bless there are sometimes i get like comments from people or dms and they're like have you tried chewing gum or yawning and i'm like yeah it's been six months <laughs> I've yawned in the past six months, I promise. I It's coming from such a sweet place, but it's just like, trust me, anything that you suggest, I have tried. I've tried every method. I've tried methods they say to do. I've tried methods they say not to do in moments of desperation. I've tried steam. I've tried all of the above. It's just, it just won't fully pop. So I have to do what's called a myringotomy. And yeah, essentially I'm awake for it, which is joyful but he just puts a few numbing drops in my ear and then pokes a tiny hole in my eardrum to relieve the pressure and then that's also going to be really helpful for when I am on a plane because if you have ear blockage and you go on a plane the pressure can really mess with your inner ear and it can like burst your eardrum and stuff and I'm not trying to deal with all that so this is kind of just like a safety precaution and hopefully I won't have any more issues after that. I did buy what's called ear planes. A lot of people recommended those and it's almost like a corkscrew earplug that you use during takeoff and landing. So I'll try that. But anyway, no one cares about all the health stuff, but I thought I would update you anyways, because what the heck? Maybe some of you are going through a similar thing, but I have never heard of someone having an ear plugged for six months, over six months now. It's like insane, but whatever. You live, you learn. It's just, it just happened because I was dealing with some congestion from when I had been sick like a week prior on an airplane and so I guess the congestion just like freaked my ear out and my ear just closed up and never opened up again <laughs> so that's what's current with me oh also last night I finally finished my book and this is probably like a bit delayed but I finished my book which is called things we crap the first one's things we never get over the things we hide from the light is the second one and the third one is like things we never let go frick I always forget the name of the third book. Anyways, it's a three series book. I'm not gonna spoil anything. It's a three book series and it's set in like a small town in Virginia. And what I think is really funny about it is this small town in Virginia is this like fairy tale land. They have the most inclusivity I've ever heard of in my entire life. They have drag queen storybook hour at the library and all these different things. And I'm like, are we talking about the same Virginia? <laughs> because my family's from Virginia and um, it's not like that. My like entire mom's side of the family's from Virginia. My mom was born and raised in Virginia, but it's just funny, like it, it's just so, it's obviously fiction. It's so unrealistic, but I think that might be like a neurodivergent thing. Like I have a hard time with like fantasy and imagination. I'm just like, this is so unrealistic. So I get kind of like 
hooked on that like focused on that basically in all three of these books it is set in this same small town it's kind of the same friend group one book is like this guy who meets this girl who comes into town the second book is his brother who meets another girl who comes into town and then the third book is the best friend who meets another girl well actually they had known each other for like 30 years or something and had this long feud and blah 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 enemies to lovers trope and i will say i don't think i have ever had a more love hate relationship with a book series in my entire life like i truly hate these books but if they wrote a fourth book i would buy it the day it came out like i would be the first in line so i don't know what that says about it but there is just so much writing in it that is so unbelievably like elder millennial cringe and it's so weird because every person i've seen review this book is like five stars i love it so much it's my favorite book and i'm like there were physically times where i had to put it down because it was so bad sometimes but all that said i fucking loved it i was obsessed i gobbled up all almost 600 pages of it it did take a while to get through but i loved it i do think that all of the men in that series um desperately need therapy like desperately need therapy and apparently in the third book lucian is in therapy well he needs more he needs more of it because oh my god these men are mean to these women like they're mean i don't understand like it's just mean and like kind of toxic so anyways sorry for the spicy take um you'll have to let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you've read all three books but yeah that being said i love it i'm a fan i'm gonna buy more if more come out but she did say the author did say like in the sort of like acknowledgements at the end that this was the end of the series so it was it's been like a nice escape because i've just been grieving a lot to be fully honest like i'm still grieving the loss of my pets um deeply and i don't really talk about it because yeah like i've said in the past it just feels really unnatural to pull out the camera and be like hey just been crying about my dog and my cat just checking in like i would never you know really do that i had sort of shared some feelings in the beginning but it just feels really raw and like vulnerable to do that and so yeah i mean i've just been trying my best i've been trying my best to like get back into the swing of things and get back into life and i just feel like i've been treading water since the beginning of august since you know we lost layla it's just been such a whirlwind and i've just been trying to survive <laughs> i've just been trying to get through the days get through the weeks get through my commitments get through work but it's been really hard like it's changed the entire course of my life my entire life revolved around these animals and you know i got layla when i was 23 i'm 35 now it just feels so weird to not have them around anymore and i keep getting freaking tiktoks of like the cutest dogs and the cutest cats and it just it's still really painful and i know that it's going to take a really long time to grieve and I, honestly this is like the first time i've been able to talk about it without crying just besides when you know right after moo died because i was just like i mean you can tell in that video like i was just not i was one percent of a human um i was just on empty but so it feels good to be able to like share stories with drew and we're kind of like laughing about things that layla and moo had done and we were like you know able to smile and be like oh you know i really love them but there's multiple times a day where we're both like i just miss them so much like there's still a lot of tears and it's just a lot but for everyone who has been just like still sending me such nice messages and checking in on me and you know things like that it's just really sweet and i really appreciate it a lot it means so so much and the internet is just such a cool thing like there's so many things that i love about the internet and there's like things that i don't love about it but the majority of you who are watching this genuinely just want the best for me and sometimes that's like hard for me to accept like you genuinely like support me and, and what i say and you know you may not agree with everything of course but you're just like the most kind warm loving people ever and it just means so much to me so anyway i love the internet internet for that um there are some things about the internet i was gonna like touch on this sort of uh, i don't know i'm kind of scared to like bring it up but speaking of the internet i i don't know how to say this swifties are kind of scaring me lately on the internet like i'm getting a little freaked out by some swifties like i think that it's listen i have been a taylor swift fan since 2006 7 i was a freshman in college i'm aging myself here but i've been around okay i've been around since the beginning and i do feel like there is just like a lot of i'm sure you know people who like sports and other things it, the fandoms are similar but the swifties recently 
have truly been terrifying me. Like, I think there's quite a difference, quite a stark difference, honestly, between like a little bit of fun speculation, a little bit of lighthearted, silly, like, ooh, I wonder, you know, if Taylor's gonna come to the game this Sunday or, you know, the football game. I'll get into that if you're not a Swifty, but um, there's a difference between that and like full blown down the rabbit hole tin foil hat conspiracy theories and like sometimes the conspiracy theorists like genuinely scare me it's genuinely scary i feel like it's so dark and sinister sometimes and and it's like taylor has mentioned many times before that she really struggles to feel like a human person anymore because of the level of her fame and like listen taylor swift is almost a billionaire okay like she's gonna be fine regardless um but just on a human level it's really bizarre it's really bizarre and weird to see how people act when you know, by the time Taylor Swift had been on one date with Travis Kelsey, which by the way, if you didn't know, Taylor Swift has been like casually dating Travis Kelsey, who is a football player. He plays for the Kansas City Chiefs and like he's established, he has his own thing going on. He's a very successful football player and he's like, you know, done some stuff in the uh, the entertainment world. He had like a show on E, like I think a dating show or something and he hosted SNL, which I saw and listen, Taylor is a freshly single out of a very long-term serious relationship girly and she is living her best life and i have seen so many like tiktoks especially tiktoks and like instagram reels of truly unhinged swifties being like she's gonna marry him and their end game and all these things and like someone wrote a fan fiction book in like three days i don't know i was watching a video from i think it's called the swiftologist the channel and I kind of agree like it felt like the most normal thing that I had seen in a while I don't know anything about this person or like if they're good or bad or whatever I just happened to see that video and I was like thank god because I don't know maybe it's because I am like a millennial and I'm a bit older because some people you know just started becoming fans of Taylor Swift during like folklore and evermore and so maybe because I've like ridden the waves and seen the seasons and whatever it just feels so weird but there's just this whole new level of like conspiracy theory about everything about her relationships her songs i don't know if i'm getting my point across very well but it's just like it, dissecting and inspecting every single aspect of her personal life and hiding in her garage you know going showing up at her apartments trying to get you know film her homes from the outside like these are things that actual fans are doing um like literally stalking her essentially stalking her it's just so icky feeling to me i don't know why it just really freaks me out and i think that there's like a huge difference between yeah like being a fan and being like oh my god let's go like we're in rhode island let's go like drive by her house or whatever but like trying to film it and see if she's in there it's just like there is such a lack of boundaries lately it's so weird i love speculating about things i love like you know talking about who she's dating and you know connecting the dots in her songs and finding things that relate to me and whatever but like it's become a little freaky deaky. It's like, it's it's concerning at this point. That's not about anyone specific, by the way. It was just something that I've been thinking of and yeah, it's kind of wild. I could go on about so many other topics, but I think I'm gonna like save it for another video because I think I've been blabbing for long enough, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Today's vlog, I just wanted to do like a chat. It sounded like I just farted just then, but it was my shoe. I promise, I promise it was my shoe. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you wanna see any future topics being chatted about, let me know. Drew and I actually have considered starting a podcast. Um, it was actually his idea. He was like, he has a name for it, a concept and everything, but it's just a matter of like, if we want to add one more aspect of like social media presence to our relationship, if that makes sense. Like our relationship is so precious to us. And also like your girl is busy. I have two YouTube channels. And so adding like a whole other platform just feels like a lot. So I don't know, we'll see in the future, but let me know if you like want to see more of these just kind of car chat, chit chatty, carry chat. I don't know what to call it, but um, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you very soon for another regular vlog. Regular vlogs will resume after this and I will see you very soon. Bye.